what inspired you to go into the world of soprano? It's a fascinating world, but what was your inspiration to go into the world of soprano? Um, so I took quite an unorthodox route um, yeah. into the classical music scene. Um, I originally um, studied uh, history. Okay. Um, I can't remember exactly what got me into it. I've always had a fascination with the music, um, but it wasn't until I was 19 that I took my first singing lesson, really. And yeah. um, after the first couple of times of taking a singing lesson, my teacher at the time then said, you could do something with it if you want. Yeah. Uh, and that was really how I fell into it. It was like sort of just stumbling in. Okay, so it's quite interesting really, so it's a bit like chance and coincidence. So for example, yeah. so you sort of, your goal was to study history and then all of a sudden you find yourself in the lesson and, and you've gone for it and, and that was that was that so that's fascinating and so who who inspires you in terms of what sort of music do you do you like yourself do you have anyone that's been inspirational in your from the point of view of soprano or yeah so like maria callas would be my, uh -huh, my okay yeah, yeah biggest inspiration she's voted in the all-time top yeah yeah so yeah. that sort of <laughs> yeah. era um, yeah. yeah so yeah. like you've got uh joe sutherland at the time tobaldi yeah um Bridget nielsen as well mm -hmm. um and corelli all the the sort of old school bel canto yes um, singers yeah that era would be what really inspired me Absolutely, yeah, no, that's, that's fascinating stuff and I suppose, you know, soprano, uh, it brings a lot of joy in, in one sense, equally in saying that the audition, I can imagine, doesn't bring a sense of joy. Um, what's it like to audition? What's sort of your take on, on an audition? Um, it's not, I'm sure if you ask any performer or anybody who has to audition for anything, it's not enjoyable in the slightest. Yes. You know that you're there to be judged. Um, a lot of the time, the situation that you put in is quite intimidating. Um, but now, um, I went to a um, like a short course over the summer last year at the National Opera Studio, and it was for auditioning. So it's like getting you ready for the panel, and they gave some quite useful tips on how to to approach the situation, which has mm -hmm. helped quite a lot, but it's always going to be a stressful situation. Absolutely. <laughs> um, regardless of whatever tips that you have or whatever that you use to... Absolutely. To yeah, so it's the appraisal of situation, interpretation of situation, where you go in there and your thoughts sort of spiral into, am I going to get the role? And um, I'm being watched, I'm being judged, and, and any form of judgment, obviously, um, as a narrative, is going to have an impact. Uh, that's that's it, yeah. yeah. So I think for most people, when you go into an audition room, a lot of people would want them to want the audition panel to like you. Yeah, because you want the role. Absolutely, yeah. And not just that, just yeah. also because it's like, a, a, um, what's the word? It, it's like. Um, an appraisal of your yeah, work. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, for sure. I can fully appreciate that. It's a little bit like, say, you know, if I was to write a book and I was asked to write an article, or um, if I did a seminar myself, then I want people to get what they want out of it. But I suppose what's different for you, it's just from the, an entertainment point of view, um, they're casting judgment on your ability. Yeah, to, exactly. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I can imagine that, you know, working on the appraisal would be a big thing. We sort of touch on that and sort of go along in, in our conversation. And do you have a vocal coach? Do you have a vocal coach yourself? Yeah, I've had quite a few through the years, but um, my vocal coach at the moment is Susan Waters. Okay, wonderful, yeah. Yeah, she's, um, she's a vocal coach at Guildhall School of Music. Wow, um, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. In, in London there. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. And yes. I'll be working with um, Nuccia Facile as well, um, wow. starting in September. Who's fantastic. A really famous Italian soprano. Absolutely, yeah. No, that's, that's really amazing stuff. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I'll have to teach you a few Italian words for me. Yes, please <laughs> do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, my sound's not very good, so probably not best. But no, that's amazing stuff. And people are probably wondering why would would you need a vocal coach? You know, just why 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 do you need a vocal coach? For the people wondering why a soprano, someone of the talent that you've got and the ability you've got, why do you need a coach for? Um, so when I first like stumbled into singing, um, I had no idea of the amount of work they had to do for it. I thought I sort of thought yeah, you yeah, put just... on a nice dress, <laughs> you get up and you sing. Yes, I, that is not how it works at all. So essentially, it's uh, people describe it as um, being an athlete. 
Mm. So essentially you have to train your body and your voice mm -hmm. and all the muscles that go along with it to make yourself um, able to create the sound. So we don't use amplification at mm -hmm. all. Um, so if you imagine trying to sing over a like 100 piece orchestra movie that's playing fortissimo yes. and then you're one person still on the stage and you have to cut through that. Yes. Um, it takes a lot of training to be able to get to the frequencies that you need to, Absolutely, be, to yeah. cut through and be heard in a, in a big space. Um, so it usually takes about 10 years to train up a voice to sing in mm. opera. No, that's really amazing stuff, that's really interesting stuff and, and uh, my understanding is that the maturation isn't until the mid-twenties to thirties of the voice anyway, so... Yeah, so yeah. that depends on the fach, which voice type you are, um, but for my voice type, which would be a lyric soprano, uh -huh. it's yes. going to take longer. Longer than that even, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, that's really interesting stuff and um, no, that's really... Fascinating in the sense that, you know, um, how do you actually prepare your voice for an audition? I can imagine for me, we talk about the athlete analogy. So if I'm going to run a race, I'm going to sort of warm up so I don't get an injury. If I'm going to play a football game, I'm going to warm the players up um, so they don't get injured and prepared mentally as well. So the importance of preparing physically. Do you have a physical preparation that you do prior to the um, a vocal preparation before an audition or uh, uh, an, an event? Yeah. So. You have to, especially if you're, do, if you're doing a performance, so if you're doing like a, quite a few performances or whatever, um, you have to physically prepare yourself for that because it's quite physical work. Yes. Um, actually being able to sing for that amount of time to build up stamina. So yeah. um, doing, actually doing cardio work is quite helpful to get your lung capacity. Yes. Um, making that progress. Um, Doing stuff like Pilates is, is really mm -hmm. useful to get the core muscles that support Absolutely, your sound yeah. to work. Um, stuff like that I do in preparation and also stuff to calm me, so meditation. Yes. Absolutely, um, yeah. It's really critical because on those uh, weeks leading up to an audition or a big performance, the stress levels are high. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the other things to do is just know your music incredibly well, like the back of your hand. Mm -hmm. um, and just carry on with vocal training as as you do normally because you can't do too much. Mm -hmm. So it's not like playing a piano or, or something, some other instrument where you can practice for hours a day. You can't do that with the voice. Yes, that's so, interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah cause absolutely. It exhausted yeah, and yeah. Do it. Yeah, now, we'll sort of hold that thought because that's an important point. We're going to come back to that shortly. But what I want to ask you is, we've talked about this before about mental preparation as well. Um, because you can't do so much physical preparation because obviously the voice is your main instrument. So do you have a way, and, and we sort of touched on that before, mentally preparing, but do you have a way that you sort of go into the right state at the right time yourself or, you know, yeah. It's a, it's a work in progress, for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so one thing that I've been given, a good tip that I've been given is to sort of visualize Mm -hmm. yourself in the situation. Yes, the neural pathways in the brain. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. And try and uh, reinforce Rehearse positivity it, yeah. rather than thinking, which is what a lot of performers do, and I'm guilty of it as well. Yes. When you're sort of waiting outside for your audition or something, you think of all the stuff that could go wrong. Yes. Um, which is very bad to do because yeah. you're putting that in. Yeah, I think that's a brain negativity bias. Exactly, I think that a lot yeah. of people have that anyway, irrespective of whether it's sort of music or whatever, really. But I think that you make a really good point there. The appraisal, and if you look at it like, okay, I've got this incredible talent and this is my opportunity to go out there and just express myself and, and you know, go to that place of joy, um, state being a key element, I think, anyway. But, you know, you've obviously got a way and, and means to get to that state, which is key, um, certainly. But how important do you think the mental side of the, I was going to say the mental side of the game then, the mental side of soprano is, how important do you think it is to... I think um, it's incredibly important. I think that yeah. singing is probably about... 90% psychological. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've got barriers, uh, which every singer does, then that's going to uh, inhibit your performances because, mm -hmm. I mean, the goal at the end of the day is to um, be respectful to the art form. Yes. So if you're not able to give yourself fully to the art form, um, then it's, it, what's the point, basically? Absolutely, absolutely. So, and that's your passion, isn't it? Yeah. You're really passionate about that, and you're passionate about people enjoying the show as well. So that's a big thing, absolutely. And I can see the mental side of the things. And do you train, say, um, the, the your, your vocals throughout the week? Is something that you do? Yeah, I, I train every day. Wow. Um, so for about probably about two hours a day, maybe. Yes. Um, actual vocal training, and then. Um, 
you know, you do all the rest of planning your music and also uh, sort of mentally performing in your head is a yes, good thing to do. Yes, absolutely. Um, like recreating the scenario and the people watching you and the feeling, yeah, absolutely. Like literally yeah. step by step. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and also yeah. characterization is a yes. like, huge thing as well. To, to that's really it. fascinating you mentioned that. The identity is, is, you know, when you talk about characterization, that's a really um, important point I think you've made there. So you sort of step into this sort of character yeah. uh, in that respect, yeah. And that's helpful with anxiety, the performance anxiety yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's no longer you, it's somebody yes. else. Yes, you can dissociate from the actual, uh, precisely, dissociation and be able to really absorb yourself exactly. like the athlete. I know you, you like your footballs uh, and sports, <laughs> so it's not like the, the person really absorbing yourself into the event. So a bit like in football, you've got a penalty shootout, like a, a footballer can score 100 goals in training penalty, but when they sort of play the game, the pressure's there, the crowd's there, and that sort of stuff. And yeah. uh, I smile because we support, well, uh, the team I support played the team that you support this year, and you got the favorable result. Um, but the point being is that, you know, um, the, in the you put the ball down, it's like everyone, all eyes on you, the press yeah, expectations. Pressure. So, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I think the appraisal is key. Your appraisal is one of the quickest ways to alter the emotional state, the way you perceive a situation. And obviously, you know, the stress, like visualization, uh, anchoring, and stuff like that. The yeah. cue is really useful. Too. Now, with all this stuff that you do, all this training you do, and the voice being an instrument, um, how do you pr protect your pathology of the voice? Um, because we know um, there's, you know, the, under stress, under pressure, under um, overuse, the voice can be pathologically uh, a problem for singers. Yourself, obviously, you know, you've got to sing it very high. Um, yeah. yeah. How do you protect yourself pathologically? Yeah. So. Like singers often, especially singers in opera, get um, accused of being divas a lot of the time. Mm. <laughs> um, so the, there's a there's a huge um, emphasis put on protecting voice for us as singers. So yes. you, you often see us all wearing scarves and stuff like Absolutely, that all the time yeah. and trying to protect the voice. Um, people even go so far as because a lot of singers have to travel by plane, which is the worst thing you can do for your voice. Absolutely, yeah. Completely yeah. dries everything out, and also it's just like everybody's germs. <laughs> it is, it is recycling. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, so people wear sometimes wear masks, yes. really fine masks. Yeah. Um, so they, people go to big lengths to try and. Um, prevent any uh, yeah. disease or whatever, but um, I'm not quite that bad, yeah, but I no. would take a lot of vitamins, I take a lot of vitamins, yes. um, I look after my diet, so I'm vegan, I'm quite yes. strict vegan, yeah. um, so I, I make sure that I um, yeah. nourish my body Absolutely, yeah. in the best way I can. So prevention um, being better than sort of cure in the sense that you can look after yourself. And well yeah, I mean, you have to yeah. do everything you possibly can yes. um, to stop yourself from getting sick because yes. that could mean that you've done you know, however many weeks of rehearsal and yes. you don't get paid because you can't do that. Absolutely, that's a big thing. And you make a great point there, and I think the same applies to any profession. You know, if you're a guitarist, you protect your guitar, your, your fingers. If you're a footballer, you're going to protect your, you know, your, your, your hamstrings, your quadriceps. You're going to make sure that, you know, you're in shape as well because, you know, obviously you can't perform and, and the voice is your instrument. So I fully appreciate that. And whilst I'm not a medical person and I'm not suggesting that other people in, who are singers do what you do, you found what works for you. And I, I would always sort of suggest just people, at least from my point of view, being being a coach in my industry, being a therapist, I always say to people, you know what, when in doubt, um, do do get medical help as early as you can, or you know, go see someone who's sort of qualified in that area, and and, and if you you know, um, that's always the best place to start, and, and then sort of tailor something for yourself that works for you, and that's the sort of key thing. It sounds like you've got something that works really well for you. So everyone's got to, you know, there's probably people watching this who. Um, you know, think about certain musicians like the old heavy metal people, you know, smoking and drinking and yeah. 78 years of age and still belting it out. And these, but you know, each person's different. But equally, saying that, you know, obviously the vocal range you've got to go to um, is different too. But that's fascinating, you know, from what you say, really interesting stuff. So let's say, you know, we get people watching these sort of uh, uh, videos and interviews from all walks of life. And if they say, someone who's considering going into the world of soprano. Uh, I'm not suggesting give them advice because it's hard to give anyone advice. You've got to make your own way in life. But what suggestions would you say? Because it's, it's quite an interesting role um, to, to be a soprano. It's, it's, it's sort of, you know, I suppose a lot of people want to be a pop star, musician, yeah. and, and that sort of stuff. And soprano, at least my interpretation, uh, at least, you know, my sense is that, you know, there's probably not 
as clear a pathway as one would do if they were going to go into the, the pop world, the sort of you know, shows that can go on and stuff they can do. And So what would you say to someone who thinks, I, I might give that soprano stuff a go? Um, it, probably, it's going to sound quite negative, probably. Um, one thing I would say is, um, don't go into it blindly. Like, yes. I, I kind of went into it blindly and didn't realise what I was getting myself in for, basically. Wow. Um, and it's, it's a huge, it, it impacts on your lifestyle completely. You have to adapt your lifestyle to, um, to make sure you progress as far as you can. Yes. So, as I said, with food and all this sort of, you know, mm -hmm. training, you have to make sure it really impacts on your life if you do this kind of yes. job and also traveling all the time. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's a high, it's a high stress job. Uh, you have to really love it and really have a, a respect for the art form. I think if you want to go into this industry, having said all that, it is the best feeling in the world to be able to express yourself, to be able to ex like uh, explore the um, extremes of human emotion, which is what opera deals mm -hmm. with. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and also perform this music that sometimes mm -hmm. is 500 years old. Yes, and that's phenomenal. It's, it's such a privilege to be able to do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, you really just have to love it. Yes, that's a really good point. That's a really honest point too. It's me being really honest there, Jennifer. I think that you know you could have easily talked about the, the beauty of you know soprano, but I think you sort of a reality there. Each profession's got you know it's, it's, it's hardships and work we've got to put in to, to get there. And irrespective of whether you're a soprano or a sports person or a business person, you've got to put the hours in, and one must make certain sacrifices if you could call it those. If you're sort of yeah. pursuing your dream, um, you make a really good point there about the evoking emotions. Uh, one of my uh, I wouldn't say a mentor, he's, I've trained with him, uh, not as a soprano by the way, in, in therapy, um, who set up the Ericsson Foundation in Arizona, um, Dr. Jeff Zai. He, he sort of is really big on classical music and, and, and soprano and um, while some more like heavy metal, we can both respect our <laughs> positions in the sense that you know he talks a lot about how the evoking of joy and and, um, and so on and so forth and, and the reality is we know in therapies about states the state we're in has a big correlation to our behavior and other things as well going forward so it's quite fascinating hearing him speak and him being a big fan of uh, the opera and, and, um, and classical music and he talks about how he sort of incorporates that as a model um, at least that's my interpretation of it in his own and that's sort of what led me on my path to sort of to know more um, you know and, and and so on and so forth and you know it's, it's really fascinating stuff really and am i okay to ask what your aspirations are, are you willing to sort of is that sort of yeah, yeah? um so sort of uh, eventually my aspirations would be to sort of to be an international singer and yes. a recognized one within the industry as well so I'd love to perform on the big stages, of course. Yes, on well, the, the biggest world. stages possible. Yeah, it? It's, it's of precise. course, yeah. Yes. Every single would, yes. I'm sure, say the same thing. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Um, but sort of short-term goals would be um, in the next couple of years to get an agent and start working sort of mm. um, smaller roles and smaller houses. And, Maybe young artist programs and stuff like that, yeah. just getting your foot in the door. Yeah. Job, well, you seem to be progressing, you know, from you seem to be going in the right direction. You've got a good team of people around you. I have, I'm very which is lucky phenomenal. as well. And you've got the ability, which, you know, good, you know, you have the, the talent too, which is great. And, and may I ask, um, do you, are you ever, I mean, you're very focused, you love what you do so much. Um, is there ever a temptation maybe to sort of do what other sopranos have done and cross over to the, um, to the, to, to the pop world? Or is that yeah, saying that? Sort of commercial stuff. Um, I understand why people do it. Um, there's there's more money, I yes. guess, in that. Um, there's people yeah. appreciate it more, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Generally speaking, um, I think in Britain there's such a, a divide on, on classical music. Like it's, mm -hmm. it seemed to be only for the upper classes. Yeah. And it's really, really not true, and that's something yes. that I want to. Promote yes. through yeah. my career somehow yeah. is to get people Absolutely, from, yeah. from different demographics yeah. to, in different ages to go to yes. the opera and yeah. experience it because it's not yeah. just for I, the opera. I just, uh, something you know, come to mind we, we, we might have a, an opera tune at, before Liverpool go out sometime. <laughs> Could that be a possibility? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's spectacular when they've got the You Never Walk Alone type thing come out, so maybe um, we could have a rendition of that. Then. A few you, Never Walk Alone? Yeah, yeah, if possible. Well, yeah. sure, if Liverpool Football Club want me to Yeah, out, absolutely. 
<laughs> Absolutely, no, that's amazing stuff, and I really respect you for you know staying true to your guns and, and doing what you love doing, and sort of focusing on that, and um, every confidence that you sort of carry on progressing and go to where you want to go. Gentlemen, it's been a fascinating interview. I'm sure everyone that's watching has really enjoyed it. Thanks again.